What advice would you give to customers that are now looking to migrate for using thermal technology for security type applications? Yeah, and to be honest, I think we're going to see quite a lot of this. You know, off the back of what I just said in the first question with the, the mass supply of these sensors and them being more commoditized, for especially the lower end spaces, I think we are going to see uh, you know, a great increase in vendors who traditionally wouldn't use them will now look in that thermal um, capability. Um, the problem is that, you know, Specifying thermal is very, very different to specifying daylight optics. Um, and further compounding in this is the, the industry standard for measuring the performance of a thermal camera in terms of detection, recognition and identification ranges is built upon Johnson's criteria, primarily. Um, and this is an old and outdated standard that primarily, you know, it, it worked to a degree for some of the shorter range, lower focal length lenses. But as you start extrapolating this out to your sort of 150mm, 225mm, then even in the cold thermal space, the numbers that it produces are completely misleading and unachievable. What this then means, if you know, for, for, for vendors who don't have an understanding of this and the inaccuracies in the standard and the fact that it doesn't take into account certain nonlinear effects as environmental climatic changes, is that they could just read a number on a data sheet that says, well, you'll detect a person at five kilometers, mm -hmm. whereas we know the reality is very different. And further to that, a lot of the big vendors in this space trade off the back of these ranges and ultimately end up misrepresenting the capability of the sensors they're providing. And this makes it quite challenging for somebody new getting into this space. You know, they see a distance on a data sheet and expect that that's well achieved, but they don't understand the underlying inaccuracies that have gone into that. Mm -hmm. um, what we try to do as best we can as to Central is educate customers on this, whether it's the higher end that have experience in this or lower end customer base or new customer base to this market. We'll typically only quote ranges that we can back up you know, through either practical demonstrations or videos from uh, deployments we've had or just generally the experience that we've drawn from the thousands of cameras that we have in the field at the moment. Yeah, you know, we can back that up through like the videos on our website. So if, if you want to see some real live examples of how the cameras perform, showing a video is probably one of the best ways of doing that. But I think also um, through some of the, 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 the calculators that we have that we can model certain um, atmospheric and regional variations to give a more accurate um, and portrayal of how the cameras will perform. So I think it's important to have that dialogue with the customer at an early stage, use the data sheet to point the customer in the right direction, but we can give more accurate numbers um, after that.